perfect. So moving on to some language features. So um, this is a nice fancy one here, um, which I guess kind of uses light and shadow to create visual depth and contrasts. So this kind of falls under the um, the subheading of lighting. Um, but this is an example of it here, kind of using those shadows to create visual depth and contrasts. Um, and definitely helps blur the line between illusion and reality or idealism and cynicism um, and Joe's moral ambiguity as well. Um, there's also pathetic fallacy, which is the attribution of human feelings and responses to inanimate objects. So Norma's home represents the decaying and damaged woman within. Um, the home is decaying and Norma is decaying. So I guess to an extent, there is a pathetic fallacy there as well. Okay. Perfect. So this um, camera angles can kind of be used as a film noir kind of technique, but obviously they're used throughout different film genres as well. But a high camera angle, so this picture down here with Norma and Joe, um, I guess is a film technique where the camera looks down at the subject from above. So can make the subject like Norma look quite small and this could be both literary and metaphorically. So Wilder uses high camera angles with Norma a lot and I think this kind of um, is a more implicit way of um, contrasting her self-aggrandizing persona. She builds herself up. I am big. It's the pictures that got small. But I think implicitly he kind of corrects that through things like a high camera angle, making her smaller than Joe in this scene, um, making her smaller than the viewers in this scene um, as well. So, and then on the other hand, we have a low camera angle. So pretty much the um, same opposite, the exact opposite, but when the camera looks up at the subject from below, making the subject appear larger. This could be metaphorically or, again, literal, um, but this kind of can instill more power and make them appear kind of scarier. So when we look at this one here, we can see that Joe is the narrator, um, so he is going to tell his story, I guess, but we are looking at him um, from below, which I guess is quite a, um, uh, how would you say, it? it definitely captures the attention of the viewer straight away. Um, with that low camera angle instead of looking above where you couldn't see his face. Um, perfect. So moving on to some symbols and motifs. There's quite a few here. Um, but Salome, Norma's script, um, in summary, in a very, very brief summary, Salome loved a man, got rejected, killed him because she got rejected. Very brief summary, but it kind of it involves um John the Baptist and stuff. It's definitely worth doing some research if you haven't already. There's a lot more depth to it, um, but in a nutshell, it there are some discrepancies, but this kind of represents Norma and Joe. The same kind of thing happens. Norma loves a man, got rejected, or he walks out, killed him because she got rejected, and then she takes on that persona of Salome as she descends the staircase for her close up. So that's why it's um quite symbolic in that way. Um, the pool as well, as I said before, it can represent Joe's success. Um, he says, you know, the poor dope finally got his pool, but the price to pay was higher. Um, you know, buying a pool or getting a pool is quite um, something that people who are um, living comfortably can do. And obviously Joe was in quite financial. Um, he had a lot of financial struggles. So a pool for him was a symbol of success. And he got the pool, but at what cost, I guess. Um, but it can also represent Norma's mental state, as I said, empty um, at the beginning, and then it's full when she's never been happier with Joe. Perfect. Um, and mirrors as well. So they are, or can be a symbol of Norma's perception of reality. So she sees things how she wants them to be seen. Um, and there are a couple of scenes with Wilders. Um, playing with those mirrors, but I guess if you um, can view them in that context, um, there might be some useful essay points there. Perfect. So, the doors in the mansion have no locks. This is symbolic of the lack of barriers in their relationship between Norma and Jarek. That one's pretty straightforward. Um, but the tennis court as well. There is a sagging net and fading lines in Norma's mansion, 
um, tennis court. And this is kind of symbolic of Joe's downfall as well. Perfect. So the chimp, as I've mentioned, um, can symbolize, or like mon monkeys in general can symbolize like a trickster and how, um, I guess this is how Norma and Joe kind of deceive each other, but obviously the chimp was also Norma's pet and Joe replaces that chimp. I've already kind of talked about that connection there. Um, and Joe's shoes as well. Shoes can represent a standpoint or a viewpoint. When the, delecta when the debt collectors come, Joe actually isn't wearing any shoes, which emphasizes the lack of clarity. Um, compared to when Norma buys his shoes for him, we can see that she he's kind of taken on her point of view, I guess. Um, or not point of view. They don't have a similar point of view, but um, standing in a different pair of shoes, I guess. Um, perfect. So Joe's car as well, initially hidden, but a car is something usually shown off in Hollywood, and I guess it symbolizes how Joe hides his persona. The car is very much related to him, and when he loses the car, he loses a part of himself, I think. Um, so that's that one. And the sunrise as well. So the film begins with a sunrise and ends with a sunset. Sunset can represent death, demise, or endings, um, which is also um, unconventionally and ironically when Joe dies. He dies at sunset um, in the film begins with the sunrise so there you go perfect so last two the mansion versus the apartment so in Artie's apartment during the new year's eve party it's a one bedroom apartment and it feels so roomy the way that um wilder has directed it and framed it in um the screen the frame of the movie film um compared to norma's mansion i think um quite claustrophobic with all those pictures of her as well um, so I guess we can see that, um, difference there as well, even though it's a bigger house, a lot more claustrophobic and eerie. Um, and the garage, Joe's imprisonment, the holes when it leaks symbolize the holes in Joe's psyche. So yeah, not much to talk about there with that one, kind of pretty straightforward. Um, some of these symbols are more universal than others, like the Salome one, some of these are quite specific, like the shoes or um, the tennis court and the garage. Um, but they are useful, maybe, if you're doing another viewing of the film, which you should definitely before the exam anyway, regardless of whether you've done the sack or not. Um, but we can kind of see how they work together to form an essay point. Um, anyway, moving on to some different techniques. So score um, is the, um, original soundtrack or music written to accompany a film. So this can kind of hint at something that's about to happen or it partners some foreshadowing. So if the music's building up, maybe a dramatic moment is going to happen, like Norma shooting Joe, and maybe the music falling silent can symbolize something as well. And imagery. So the street name, Sunset Boulevard is the opening of the film, but displayed in the gutter. Kind of already talked about this at the beginning, um, but it definitely establishes Miller's perspective on Hollywood, which is in the gutter. Um, and that's pretty much immediately as well. Um, and it's a street associated with wealth, and um, it's definitely an affluent street. And I think um, it just partners a much um, more underlying darkness um, as well to the industry. <laughs> 